That Monday, when we met, with, when we were supposed to get with Elon, when we landed, we were told that Steve Channel was uh, permanently banned, and it just kind of soul uh, sucked the soul out of all of us. Steve loves Elon, and there was one time he made just this joke video when Bitcoin had crashed, and uh, you know it came out that like Elon sold all his Bitcoin, and Bitcoin crashed, and Steve like lost a lot of money, so he made an anti-Elon video once. That's a joke, you know. The biggest problem Steve will do it has, and I think this is what's led to Steve's termination of his YouTube is. All right, guys, bang, bang. I've got John here with me. Uh, I thought a great place to start is last time we talked, you were doing nothing with Happy Dad, Nelk, anything. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys have absolutely exploded onto the scene. And what I think is interesting is like, there's a content story and then there's a business story. And everyone is very focused on the content because that's what you can see, right? Yeah. Uh, I care about the business. And uh, when I see you or any of those guys posting and you're going to like a liquor store and there's literally a line out the door around the block, you know, there's cops there making sure that everyone's like staying in line, making sure they're getting in. People are signing uh, mm -hmm. all of the alcohol. Like this is a massive, massive movement in the business that you guys are building. How do you think about day one? You walk in and you're like, all right, we have to build a business here. Like, what do you think is the advantage that you have? And how do you think about which products to launch and kind of like what to sequentially do from a business perspective? Yeah. Um, well, I always say this, and this is pretty much a no brainer. And, you know, but but it does come down to the product being great at the end of the day. Um, it's always got to, always has to start with that. I, and that's the advice I'd have to give anybody. It's like, no matter how big you are, how many followers you have, or how many connections you have with whatever retailers or whatever it is, if your product's not great, like people are gonna give every product a chance once. If it sucks, they won't come back. Mm -hmm. We're going on to two years of Happy Dad now. Our rebuys are absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. We haven't launched a new state in six or seven months. We're about to launch five new ones in the next six weeks, but we haven't launched any and our sales are still growing in the existing states because they're rebuys and we haven't even re revisited those stores yet. So it's really the product. It has to start 100% with the product. Um, and then, yeah, then there's a lot of others. But stuff why Happy Dad, right? Like, wh like, why is that the product that you guys were like, we're going to hang our hat on this and we mm -hmm. think this is the thing that we can build a big business around? We want, um, you know, the seltzer business has been growing over the last few years. Um, it's pretty much become a beer replacement. Mm -hmm. Uh, and happy dad, the way it was the, the branding, the marketing, or even the type of can that we use was really to target the male audience when it comes to seltzer consumption. It, almost every single seltzer you see right now comes in a skinny can, multiple colors, you know, just going after, you know, a different. The, yeah. And now, you know, and our initial because and, and it wasn't necessarily oh, we need something for men. It was like our audience were men. The Nelk audience is men. 80 percent plus of the Nelk viewer um, across all socials are men. So we said, all right, what can we make for our audience that mm -hmm. will convert? Um, what's funny is like female is love happy dad. We could get into <laughs> why like, you know, it wasn't our target. But, you know, I think because of the flavoring and the amount of carbonation, I could get into that. But, you know, um, and maybe even let you know that we're launching happy mom, but we'll talk about that. <laughs> so because of that, but, um, but yeah, I think, um, really happy dad was, we want to go after the seltzer market. It's become a pretty much a replacement to beer, uh, for all different types of reasons from the taste to the calorie count, carb count. Now people are a lot more conscious of their health right mm -hmm. now. Um, you know, I think a lot of different reasons post pandemic, realizing that maybe the best, um, you know, solution to, you know, some of the, what happened with the pandemic was actually your health versus mm -hmm. can't go down that rabbit hole of, uh, you know, don't say it, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but, but health at the end of the day, you know, um, health is wealth and, um, and I, you know, and I think we all want to be healthy now, you know, yeah. I think we've learned over the last few years, like, you got health as well. And I think that the big narrative was uh, Nelk had these amazing videos that were going super viral to this big audience. Uh, it reminded me a lot of like the Barstool audience early on when I was in college and uh, in the Northeast, like you just knew they'd show up for the blackout tour or whatever and like people would show up, right? Yeah. And these guys seemed to be able to say, hey, I'm gonna be somewhere and the audience showed up, right? Like they were willing to go do that. They also were buying a lot of merch. And so usually those two you know, data points tell you, hey, this is a real audience, it's really engaged, it really kind of subscribes to the lifestyle and, and, and the values and all that type of stuff. Um, but 
they weren't monetizing any of the content as far as I understand, right? Like there weren't a lot of brand deals. They uh, didn't have any ads from YouTube or any of that stuff. And it pretty much was just like a merch business attached to content. Is that like a fair uh, way to evaluate what they were doing before you guys really got into a lot of the consumer goods? Yeah, well, um, merch was a big part of their business because they were demonetized from YouTube mm -hmm. um, during pandemic years, during, during 2020, um, they, you know, they were the ones that weren't refusing to not go out and party still and mm -hmm. they were still having gatherings and filming the gatherings and and they were demonetized by youtube uh, but nelk was a pretty big organization on the back end you know mm -hmm. there's a couple dozen employees so um they had to figure out how to pay bills mm -hmm. and merch kind of became the pivot um and focus mm -hmm. and um and you know we say to this day is being demonetized by be, being demonetized by YouTube ended up being one of the biggest blessings because, you know, the merch revenue has been exploded 30, 40 X what YouTube revenue would ever be um, from an ads inside. And then on top of that, brands, brands are extremely afraid to work with creators. Mm -hmm. They've always been afraid, um, you know, um, just seeing what's happened over the years with different creators, which, I've never agreed on why everyone was so angry at some of them, you know, and trying to cancel everybody. But the, the creators that have been canceled over the years, it's, it's frightened um, a lot of brands. And that's also become a blessing in disguise because like brands have always been afraid of Nelk mm -hmm. um, and um, or all, all types of creators, but specifically Nelk. So that's where Happy Dads come in. It's like, all right, do we go and do a super small deal with Anheuser-Busch and try to explain ourselves and then be limited on the content, be careful of the content, or do we make our own brand, mm -hmm. which... Better decision. A, yeah. And now walk me through operation. One of the things that, uh, a lot of folks in the business world, and a lot of investors are waking up to is uh, these creator led businesses basically did the business creation in reverse, right? Usually you build a product, then you go find the customers. Nelk and many others have basically found the customers first, and then they go and they're building the product. But building the product for many creators is actually a really, really hard thing to do. They don't have that skill set. They don't have the connections. They don't have the capital. They don't know who, like, am I going to have operate this thing? You obviously have been around for a long time. You've seen a lot of different businesses. Um, and you have, not only are you well connected, you guys have access to capital. Like, you know, I think a lot of folks kind of say like, oh, John's there. Like, this has got a shot of actually working from an operational standpoint. How did you think about operationalizing it, right? Like just you showing up, you're not going to do everything. So like no. do you build out a whole team. Do you go and you just like partner with somebody and it's your brand with their operations? Like how does that work? Um, you know, the one thing I've always been very good at is finding delegating work and finding the best person and being able to hire and fire hire and and find the best person for any specific role. Mm -hmm. So um, specifically with happy that obviously there's so many different sectors of our businesses there's alcohol there's merch mm -hmm. there's media with our podcast but but on the alcohol side when the decision was made to make happy dad um there's this family that i know the butow family um longtime friends of mine um been in the alcohol business for many years but dec decades i mean the 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 father keith butow's you know um you know, they call him the godfather of the alcohol industry. Like, so went to straight to them and said, hey, listen, um, need to make an A-plus product. You know, I've got mm -hmm. the platform, the Nelk Boys. We want to make a seltzer. we got the branding. we got everything. But we need the liquid to be A-plus. Mm -hmm. And they're like, say no more. And immediately started creating the flavorings. We did taste tests. And, you know. That, that's one thing that I've been really great at. And then then now that's the that's the beverage. That's the li mm -hmm. liquid. Now who gets final say on the taste test? It's all of us. There's all a there's a group it's like of consensus. There's a group need. of about seven to ten of us. Mm -hmm. And it has to be unanimous. Mm -hmm. um, if one person doesn't like it, we go back. Mm -hmm. So it's no like not. Nah, sorry, Sam. We like it. You don't. Or sorry, sorry Kyle or sorry, Joe Butow. It's everyone has to okay. love it. Um, and that's why we go back and forth so much. If one person says, I'm not sure, we're going back. So, and I think that's been part of the happy dad success has been that too. Um, but then, you know, there's that part, there's the liquid, then there's, then there's uh, liquid and, and manufacturing, right? Mm -hmm. From cans to breweries, um, it originally starts with flavoring, then breweries, cans, but then, then the, now it's got to leave the brewery. It's got to go 
two different states. Mm -hmm. Every state we have a different distributor. So mm -hmm. had to find someone to help me find the right distributors, the right partners. Mm -hmm. A lot, a lot of states in alcohol are um, have franchise laws, meaning once you sign the deal with that distributor, you're in with them for life. It's crazy law, by the way. <laughs> Crazy, crazy. Uh, obviously you know, a free market principle, of yeah, course. Of course. Hundred year old laws, you know. So <laughs> so anyway, so now we're like, all right, so if we're in with these guys for life, we gotta be careful because one is they gotta be great. They gotta make us a priority. Mm -hmm. Uh they can't have a product by a competitor because we'll be bullied, you know, if they mm -hmm. carry like let's just say I don't want to name any competitors, but we all know who the competitors are in the can alcohol space. Uh, you know, if they say like, hey, like these happy dad guys, you better shove them out, make a, you know, like they're gonna listen to the bigger guy, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, but then also, you know, with distribution, you got to also say like, all right, one day if the, you know, a strategic partner wants to come into the business, do they like that distributor? Cause you're mm -hmm. in with them for life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, there's all those pieces we had to learn as mm -hmm. well. So I had to bring in someone to help me learn that side of yeah. things. So I, I did that, that, then that happened. And then, then there's now the retail side. It's, all right, cool. All right. We got a great product. It's been shipped out to the distributors. Um, how do I get Kroger's to care? How do I get Publix? How do I get Walmart? How do I get 7-Eleven Circle K? How do I get them to care? So that was, you know, so I was able to go and pretty much help find best people. You know, there's the point A to Z is so long in alcohol, mm -hmm. but I was, that's, that's something I've always been great at. How much at. of the talent that you ended up recruiting, were you able to just go to them early on and say, hey, here's our idea here's, you know, the milk boys, here's their audience size, like get on board versus you had to kind of get things in motion and get some momentum. And then it was easier to convince, you know, some of these A plus people to come on. I think I've been very lucky. And I've said this in a lot is um, I've always had this philosophy of um, life is long, not life is short. And I've mm -hmm. built some really great relationships in the last 20 something years that I've been in business where um, when I make these phone calls, almost everyone kind jump. of knows I'm a man of my word and yeah. they'll give me a chance, whether it's pre-launch, shortly post-launch, whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. I could with some of my friends, I've been very, very, very lucky with the friends and partners that I have that, you know, I can make calls and everyone's going to give me a chance. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Is it just that you've been doing it a long time and, and you've been successful and kind of always done what you said or is it something else? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not a bridge burner. Yeah. Yeah. That's not, that's not anything that I do is burn a bridge. I know and I'm still, I'm old, but I'm still still young. You know, I'm 43 yeah. years old. I know in, when I'm 55 years old, I'm going to need to call you for something, yeah. you know, and I know when I'm 55, I'm, you're going to take my call or vice versa. You're going to call me and I'm going to come through for you. You know, yeah. we're going to know each other in 12 years, you know, so so that's why to me, I'm, I'm also thinking my relationship with you or my relationship with whomever, your brother, anybody, you know, I'm, we're still pretty young. Yeah. You know? I mean, people have a hard time thinking five or 10 years in advance, let alone if you're, you know, in your twenties. Yeah. Right. Some of these guys, the boot towels, 40, 50 years from now, the boot family I met in 1999. I met the new boot boot family wow. 1999. Yeah. I was 19 years old at the time, maybe 20, um, 20 years old. I think I was at the time when I met them. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I met them so long ago. I was actually with them when 9-11 happened. We were literally watching TV together. Like, that's how long ago I knew them. Mm -hmm. So for me to 20 years them, later, you call Yeah, them. for 20 years later, it's like, hey, listen, I know you guys are got all these partners and you guys are doing these tequilas and vodka. I think they were part of the Tito's team. And um, I forgot the name of the tequila, but a big tequila. Um, I actually had a business with them. We created an alcohol a long time ago and the alcohol failed. And, you know, many know when a, when a business fails, partners usually hate each other and mm -hmm. don't ever want to talk to each other again. It's like, mm -hmm. we still love each other and they still took my call. This was 15 years ago when we made that tequila that failed 15 years later, they're still taking my call. So mm -hmm. I think that's kind of a lesson for anyone in business is like, don't burn a bridge. Life is long. Life is not short. You know, yeah. when people say life is short, they're just like, dude, get whatever it takes. Go burn that bridge. Screw that person. You, 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 you. I don't, I don't agree with that. Yeah. And I, I think it's kind of proof now. It's like, you know, when Kyle or Steve or any of my partners calls like, hey, can you help get this? Can you help get this done? It's like thinking that, you know, I'm sure we'll talk about it, but I've been like getting Elon Musk, you know, yeah. on. How'd that happen? I asked him twice. First time he said, maybe. Second time he said, sure. But that's a you 10 year. Yeah, uh, email email them at the time. And then like, they, then um, then I followed the second time was a text. I was like, yo, <laughs> you said maybe. You know, like what like yeah. what do you say what do you say in the text? Are you hitting Elon with like a you up text? Or are you just like very specific, hey, we're gonna be in Austin, here's the date and time, can you do it? Um no, he he said if you're in Austin or he, Well 
both. Try to be as specific as possible, but be short as well. Mm -hmm. I know I only have a few seconds of his time. Um, but when I had text, when I texted him the last time, um, I said, hey, I think this is a great weekend to do this. Um, at the time, the Twitter deal was kind of pending. I said, I'll stay away from any Twitter talk because there was like this talk yeah. of Twitter lawsuit and all this. I'll stay away from all Twitter talk. Um, I'll give you final approval yep. on the video. I actually think that this is something that um, many people who aren't in the content creation business don't really understand. So journalists, there's no final approval, mm -hmm. right? They're going to write their story. They're going to do their interview. They're going to uh, kind of produce whatever content they are and they go out with it and they do their best for the most part to try to be accurate and try to get, you know, all the different perspectives and, and kind of um, I, I think most journalists are, are trying to do the right thing. Uh, but when there is no final approval, like it just goes out and uh, a friend of mine recently, somebody wrote a big article about him and I texted him and he was like, I'm happy with how it turned out. Right. And so it was like kind of like you don't know until yeah. it's out and he read it and, and, and he liked it. Now, in podcasts and YouTube and all this stuff, what I've noticed is there are a lot of business leaders, a lot of um, uh, investors, those types of individuals who are gravitating towards podcasts and, and YouTube style content because they do get to see it at the mm. end. And I think that there's a difference between like what some people would refer to as like the gotcha journalism, right? Yeah, Which is yeah, like, yeah. hey, I'm trying to get you to say something that's bombastic so then I could twist it or whatever versus like, we're going to talk about things today that are like non-controversial, right? And it's yeah. like, I want you to be able to feel comfortable to talk, right? And vice versa when you guys are doing those interviews. But how important do you think it is that you say to a guy like Elon, you get final approval? It's very, it's very, you know, it's what's crazy what you're saying is it's very, important because we offer it to every single guest mm -hmm. and what's crazy is nobody's ever called us said to take this out right because i think they feel so comfortable that they're just like not on the spot and they're not overthinking what they're saying because they're like okay at the end of the day i'm gonna have final approval yeah. but there wasn't a single thing eli i didn't he we didn't even talk about it after we just went live i think we went yeah. live like a two days later like he never said hey i thought you said final approval there was nothing sometimes we'll ask someone at the end like, I remember we did David Portnoy and I texted him. I said, hey, anything that you want to take it out of that? He said, no. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes I'll follow up and ask, but almost never has anyone ever told us, even though we've offered it. No yeah. one said, hey, take that one part out or whatever. I always say that the people who ask for a bunch of stuff to be removed, we've had I don't know, maybe 1,200 episodes, maybe like five or six people who have been like, you know, literally one person one time was like, here's the timestamps. Mm. Can you take out this to this, this to this, whatever? It's like those are the episodes where you're like, look, it's already trending where if you're yeah, that worried yeah, yeah. about it, you probably really weren't saying things anyways that were yeah. super, super interesting. And so uh, the more successful somebody is, the less likely I think they yeah. are to. Uh, okay, I to can tell it. you right now, there'll be no no changes required from this episode. <laughs> so, there'll be none. If I said something wrong, that's on me. That's, 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 not, yeah. that's not your team's fault. That's, <laughs> that's, that's my fault. All right. Uh, so you guys do the Elon interview. W what is that like? I mean, you guys are obviously you're all in there. Yeah. I think that you and, and kind of your background, your relationship, you've known him, right? All this yeah. stuff is very different than maybe like Kyle or, or any of the other guys. Like, what are they like before Elon comes in the room? Right. What like what is that whole process like? Well, it was um, it was, I think, a little nerve wracking because it was one It was supposed to be done the day before. And there were some kind of like some hiccups and some issues with like different things that it didn't happen. So then the next day, actually, I didn't get a hold of Elon till like 3 p.m. the next day. Mm -hmm. So, um, so there were, you know, we, uh, we had flown out. Um, it was my brother's birthday the day before. So we had f flown out and, you know, spent a lot of money last second to fly out. And I'm just sitting there. I took my wife with me at the time. So I'm just like, I had like some like emotional support. Cause I was yeah. just like, I can't let these guys down. Like the whole team flew to Austin. Because the last message you were asking what the last message with Elon was, hey, I'm down to do it this weekend. And um, I said, where, at, where are you going to be? And he said, Florida or Texas. I was like, well, like, like, which one? Like, I didn't even know you go to Florida. I've never yeah. heard of Elon coming to Florida. I was like, you know, coin but, flip. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, which one? And um, I said, should we just book our flights to Texas? And he just wrote back, sure. I was like, okay. So then we just did that. Um, this was on a like Friday. I said, hey, we'll be there Monday. And he said, okay. Some things happened Monday, couldn't happen. So then um, I said, hey, let's do it tomorrow. He said, message me in the morning. Message him in the morning. Didn't hear back till like 3 p.m. And then he, he just wrote me like, see you at 9 p.m. tonight. 
So 9 p.m. on a Tuesday, the world's richest man just rolls. What was it like in a hotel room? We we, uh, we we had got a hotel room like yeah. in downtown Austin. Yeah, and, and so he just rolls in, just rolls and in, just sits down, and just records just a fucking in. podcast. Yeah. So he's like pulling up. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> 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 it's always so funny to me right because you you always remember like once you're around these folks that like yeah. they are humans right they put yeah. one pant leg on at a time like all the all the normal shit yeah. they text right pulling up like yeah. whatever uh but from afar right like he's dealing with the twitter stuff yeah. he's got somebody tracking his like uh private plane yeah. he's freaking out about right like launching all this, rockets like, yeah like all this crazy <laughs> stuff that you got to deal with when you're the world's yeah. richest man and running yeah. all these companies <laughs> and then like you find time to you know yeah. go chill in a fucking he's the best man i after that like he and i've always and i was going back to the relationship i met him in 2013 so this is now what we're talking about is august of 2022 so it's mm -hmm. like nine years after like nine years of me and him just kind of like just kind of occasionally chat and ran into each other a few different times um mutual friends birthdays uh actually one time i was at a restaurant he was there we get, you know we're, we ran into each other we we're sitting next to each other but uh um you know we just always kind of stayed in touch um but after then like he and i really stayed in touch like yeah. you know there's like it's like kind of crazy now it's like i talk to him weekly like really yeah all what different types of things usually twitter uh, yeah, yeah, usually Twitter. Like, you like you know, giving him like product tips, uh, creators. Like, like yeah. I really, he really c cares about the creator space, mm -hmm. and um, he really wants Twitter to be the greatest platform for creators. Mm -hmm. So he'll he'll definitely call me on. We'll talk product a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. He knows like my background with like building the app ten years ago with shots, but um, but I think more is like creators, like you know, yeah. uh, creators of all different worlds, not just YouTubers and influencers, mm -hmm. but like athletes and actors and actresses and um and musicians you know yeah. stuff like that one of know? the things i saw that he was talking about i don't know if they're going to implement it or not that i thought was a pretty interesting idea is they're going to put ads potentially in the comments and then the creator who creates the yeah, original sure post right could get a yeah. share of uh the actual ads in uh in the comments and, yeah, yeah yeah you know it, it would be like the equivalent of youtube throwing up ads in the comment section and then you get a, a share yeah. of it and i just thought like Okay, whether that works or not, it's always unclear, right? You got to kind of test it and they'll look at the data and they'll decide whether mm -hmm. it's worth uh, shipping or not. But like, man, they're thinking differently. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. like they're they're willing to test some things that, model that works, may though. be taboo, right? That model works. Um, Snapchat does that right now with creators. They mm -hmm. run ads in between stories on Snap and they mm -hmm. share that with creators, and it's very good money. So mm -hmm. this, um, you know, obviously Twitter doesn't have stories. I do think, and I've told Elon a few times, I do think Twitter should bring back stories. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if you remember they had fleets. Yep. Um, just just like was like X. I mean, even the name, like what's, yeah. what's a fleet? Isn't that when you buy a bunch of cars? Like, you know, like what? <laughs> what, like, what you know, it's like, but but you know, just bring back Twitter stories and just call it Twitter stories. But you know, um, but yeah, I mean now, but the way they're doing it because of the comment section, which is mm -hmm. you know a lot of people read on Twitter um, versus just viewing. Um, I think you'll get a lot a lot of engaging people reading, yeah. and I think. You could sell that engagement to advertisers as well. Yeah. So. I mean, putting the view count alone, right, was a pretty big deal. Like, it definitely, I think, opened people's eyes. To like, hey, people may not be engaging, but they're here. Yeah. They're watching, yeah. right? And, I thought that was that, genius. Yeah, I did too. I, th I think I know there was a lot of backlash in the beginning, but I thought it was genius. I hope that feature is here to stay. Um, I think it's great. I actually messaged them that too. I said, hey, I think this is a feature that should be here to stay. Yeah. Um, who, yeah. who are you guys trying to get on the podcast that you haven't been able to get yet? Is there like somebody who's like on the full send podcast? Because yeah. we have a few. We have the pivot. So uh, on full send, send specifically, yeah. let's start um, there. Because most people would think Elon would be like the top of the mountain, right? But you guys already got him. Is there anybody else that you guys are like look? We've this gotten really Elon. Want? We've got the, Trump's been on there. Um, you know, well, I, 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 he, he was on the podcast. I don't. It, the video didn't last long. Yeah, yeah. I think forty eight <laughs> hours or twenty four hours. Um, <laughs> Um, Did you know it would get taken down? No, no, I didn't think it would. So that one, even after you guys recorded, you thought that it was going to be fine. Yeah, but someone from his team, a good buddy of mine who works for him, said, "Hey, this is going to be taken down pretty soon. Watch." And I said, "Why?" He's like, "Because read all the comments; they're all positive about him, and because it's positive, it's going to go down." I was like, "Okay." And then, and you read. I mean, if, even if you read, because we we weren't going into that Trump. I want to answer the question about yeah. who because I, I love that question. Um, but. Um, we weren't going into it as a political 
Yeah. You know, like we try to stay clear of politics as much as possible. Um, a lot of the podcasts I actually help write the questions. So like some of the questions were like, what songs on your playlist? What do you listen to when you're in shower? Like, you know, you know, even like joke, I don't think they ever asked this one, but like, what do you think about the Kim at the time it was relevant? Kim and Kanye situation. And like, you know, like just want to felt show like them. dudes hanging out. That's what, that's what we wanted. And, and he, that's what we and got. He is what, regardless of your politics. Yeah. He is a master manipulator of the media and he has hot takes and he has posted, frankly, some of the most viral content on the internet in the last decade. I mean, I still tell people like when he was president, one of the most ridiculous but hilarious things that he did was when he was tweeting at Kim Jong Un and called him Lil Rocket Man. <laughs> right? Bro, he's the funniest man on the like, internet. And you're just like, dude, you're the president. Yeah. Like, please don't start World War Three. But also like, okay, you didn't start World War Three. Like that shit's pretty funny. Yeah, right. And the entertainment bro, factor so is like off the charts. And so Even that's the what debates, the, the debates, yes. the debates in 2016 and the ones again in 2020, like. And so that's what it felt it's like. Just great content. It, it felt like you guys were there hanging out with him mm -hmm. and, and firing questions that he never gets asked. Yeah. Right. And like, I mean, I want to almost go as far as to say, like, it looked like everyone was enjoying it. Like he was having Dude, fun. We had the best time. And, and then the guys were having fun, too. Yeah, we had the best time. And I'll, and I'll be, you know, again, like I just try to steer clear of politics but i could just say one thing about him he was so cool to us like he was so kind like even mm. when the cameras were off he was just like welcoming and making sure we got everything we needed and then we ran into him tw uh, twice since we ran into him at um, his golf course in la um and then we ran into him at a um at a live golf tournament in um, new jersey um same thing like every time he's giving us a hugs and like ha asking us how we're doing he actually um I, I saw him a couple months after I got married in June mm -hmm. and he said, Hey, I heard you got married. Congratulations. And he actually sent a letter to like uh, me and Renee and like congratulating wow. us on our wedding. And like, yeah, it was just like, you just like, that's why it's hard for me to like, just be around any negativity, but also like, I'll be honest, like I'm not, I'm also not a, uh, I'm not a Joe Biden hater either. Like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the man's the president of our country. You know, mm -hmm. uh, he has serviced the country for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, um, he was elected president and, you know, his age might be his only one of may maybe a major flaw, but like, that's not his fault. Like we still yeah. voted him in, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? So it's like, you know, you know, uh, so. I think there's a lot of people who wish that they were uh, operational at uh, at his age. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm actually sometimes impressed. I mean, sometimes it's funny, right? Yeah. Some of these clips where you just yeah, like reading and it's like completely like, you know, but it's like, you know, what, what can we do with politics? You know, I, I just laugh. There's nothing we can do. There's nothing you and I can do to change anything. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah, we yeah, can yeah. go and vote and our vote counts, but that's about all we can do, you know, yeah. like, you know, so now but I'm just going to sit back and enjoy it. I think that's it the is. other thing. It's is great entertainment. Everything in everything that is seen through the portal of your phone or your computer has become entertainment. And sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. Yeah. But like, I think that gets lost a lot of times because people take so much so seriously. Yeah, but yeah. like, if there's one thing that we've learned is that if you're entertaining and you can hold people's attention, you're charismatic you or whatever, you win, yeah, you win right? Yeah. You win in politics, you win in business, you win in all these different facets. And I think that is one thing that uh, the younger generation has an advantage on is like they grew up with the phone in their hand. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like yeah. they understand that, in, you know, it's the life is a movie. Yeah, right. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's how they live their lives. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you were asking earlier about who on Full Send podcast. Um, I think uh, one of the things so had Elon, have had Trump, um, I've had Dana White, who I, you know, admire Mike Tyson. Um, I mean, I mean, you know, Dave Portnoy, which, which I think is probably one of the most underrated entrepreneurs of our time. Um, but um, I can't say anything nice about Dave because in a recent episode, I called him a pioneer of the digital media age. And uh, I'm just waiting for him to find that clip and then go and, uh, and celebrate. So yeah, he, yeah. He, he, he's incredible in terms of what he's done. I think yeah. people don't uh, give him the credit he deserves for a 20 year run doing mm -hmm. it too, right? It's not like you just show up on the scene for two years. I think he's the, um, I would put him in top five greatest um, entrepreneur in the world of sports. You know, mm. like when you're making that list of like the greatest entrepreneurs in the world of sports and you take out all the s sport owners, you mm -hmm. know, the Jerry Joneses mm -hmm. and Al Davis and all of them take all those guys out. Um, but uh, on just sport entrepreneurs, like I would put them in top five. They all time. time of our time of, our, of time. our time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know who was doing stuff in the 70s and 80s, yeah. but of our time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would say so. who else is up there. Ruben, Ruben, 100 percent Ruben. Um, 
Um, I mean, just those two guys. Dana White. Know, right. Yeah. Dana White. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 There's, pro there's probably like five or six people you could come up with that you're mm -hmm. like, man, they've built what is hundreds of millions or billions of dollars of enterprise value, specifically at the intersection of media, business, whatever, and sports. Yeah. And they've done it really redefining what sport is or how it's covered or, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And like that is the definition of a pioneer, right? Yeah. Yeah. I would say Mark Cuban too. Mark Cuban. Uh, you know, yeah. Obviously, he owns the Mavs, but outside of Mavericks, he's done mm -hmm. quite a bit as well. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, I think those, uh, you know, for guests going back, I want to try to answer that question again because I think about it all the time. Who else? And what's the yeah. direction of the podcast? Um, I think um, different creators or celebrities or whatever who um, who actually have products like. I mm -hmm. also think full send podcast could be a platform for someone who's got their own happy dad or whatever and mm -hmm. come and talk about the business with the boys. Because that's mm -hmm. the one thing with Kyle, especially who's the main host of the podcast. It's his podcast. And, um, you know, he really understands he's very hands on with the business of happy dad. So, like, let's just say, like, I, I was just talking to Kevin Hart's um, partner in the tequila. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about how how to get Kevin on and what would they talk about? You know, Kevin mm -hmm. doesn't really know the Nelk boys all that well. And, mm -hmm. you know, so. Um, that would not be a funny episode at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I can't wait. You know, it's going to be some one liners in that one. But um, I think um, who's taller? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think um, talking about like his tequila, you know, and like the business, yeah. you know, the stuff that we opened up this podcast with and talking about is like the business behind, mm -hmm. you know, like his his tequila. Um, I need to try it. I haven't tried it yet, but everyone that's talked about his tequila has talked about as a 10 out of 10 product. Mm -hmm. It's because it's on the higher end of the tequila. Like he's not going after like the lower, mm -hmm. lower end. Like it's a higher price point tequila. But um, but it's like, you know, we share distributors and our mm -hmm. distributors, like when I, I was just randomly I'll ask him, like, how's Kevin Hart's tequila? They're like crushing it, absolutely really? crushing it. So, so is it crushing? I know it's not crushing because of Kevin Hart. Hart, mm -hmm. he's got the right partners. Now Kevin Hart's got a crazy platform and mm -hmm. like and what he's doing, it's helping. But it mm -hmm. starts with your partners. And yeah. like he went and he went and found the right partner. This guy James who's awesome. And then James went and got the right product made. You know, and then they went and I know they the distributors that they use, the same mm -hmm. ones we use. Great. A plus. And and then now Kevin's got this platform and now he's grinding as well and all the mm -hmm. time. So it's like, you know, there's so many different parts to building a could you know a creator product which what kevin's tequila is i think like getting guests like that to talk about that like or another one that i think is a very underrated business because he has so much potential i was actually talking to him this morning about is david dobrik and his pizza place mm. you know one might look at it as like wait it's just one location off sunset boulevard yeah that location is less than six months old like wait until you see what he does with this over the next few years mm -hmm. the opportunities of growing it into multiple cities mm -hmm. may, maybe franchising it maybe you see the frozen pizzas and Costco's, you know what I mean? Like, like David Dobrik has a billion dollar business right in, you know, in his hands, you know? Yeah. Um, what was fascinating to me is that all of these brands uh, are the equivalent of, as a kid, when we grew up like CC's pizza, N nobody mm -hmm. knew what the hell CC's was, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was just like, you went to a place, you liked it, you kept coming back. But now what ends up happening is somebody like a David Dobrik can open a pizza place and he's done the marketing for years. He's already built the fan base. He's done all this stuff. And it is the like athlete endorsement type model. Now it's just, these people are realizing like own the They're business, it. Yeah, right? It. And it then begs the question, like, the Nelk boys, are they creators or are they entrepreneurs, yeah. right? Kevin Hart, is he a movie star? Is he a comedian? Is he a entrepreneur? Like I would say entrepreneur. I think that yeah. they all fall under that entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs that just happen to create, you know, yeah. different than you and I, you know what I mean? Like, you know, we were businessmen, but we also know how to create, but in different ways, you know, mm -hmm. we know how to go on podcasts and speak well. They know mm -hmm. how to create. Kevin Hart knows how to create in front of a live audience telling jokes or mm -hmm. no boys know how to create great content that will go viral on YouTube and the internet, mm -hmm. you know, just in different ways. But how do you think about how big Happy Dad is? Like in terms of, are there numbers that you guys have shared publicly in terms of like how big that business actually is? It's very big, but what's crazy is, um, you know, when I say we're two years old, um, we, we right now we're only as of now yep. in March, 2023, we're in 16 states only. Okay. And in, in those 16 states, we have less than 10% penetration. We're not in every single store yet in those 16 states. Um, but when you look at the Nielsen charts, that's public to anyone who wants to go look or subscribe, wh wh however way you want to get access to Nielsen is um, we're moving up on the charts in so many different um, 
parts of America. Mm-hmm. You know, we, uh, you know, we're, we're top 10 everywhere that we're available, but in some regions and some stores, we're a top three, you know, top not, three alcohol brand, t- uh, top three seltzer. seltzer so okay. White Claw is number one mm-hmm. by a landslide. Mm-hmm. Truly is number two. Mm-hmm. And three, four, five have always been kind of a battle between Vizzy, Bud Light Seltzer. Um, depending on your region, there's a lot of local ones. Mm-hmm. Um, like in Southern California, there's one called Ashland. Um, you know, there's never been a solid number three. And mm-hmm. we've, in a lot of territories, we've taken that number three and we've kind of locked uh, Topo Chico as mm-hmm. a, was a big one. That's actually was number three in a lot of sp- slots um, that's owned by Coca-Cola. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've in a lot of areas, we've locked in that number three. So mm-hmm. now because like White Claws got number one locked mm-hmm. and for now. For now, yeah, for now, yeah. But they're also got many years ahead of us. Yeah, I mean, White Claws, I would say like six years old, mm-hmm. uh, maybe a little bit older. Um, and then Truly's got number two locked, you know, but we were we wanted to lock number three, and now we're locking number three in a lot of regions. Mm-hmm. So so that's, you know, that, that's only in the 16 states. Uh, we're launching five more states. We're launching, um, we're launching Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, Canada's a big market for our um, our content consumption. And and then also like what we're also now looking at is like uh, different audiences at different s- sectors of consumers. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know we know if you're 25 to 30 years old, you've heard of Happy Dad, you've tried Happy Dad if it's available in your state. Uh, but now we're looking at a, a male. If you're 25 to 30 year old male, uh, now we're looking at okay, how do we hit the female market? How do mm-hmm. we hit the Latino market? How mm-hmm. do we hit the black market? Mm-hmm. Like, how do we hit, you know, these other markets? Each, outside just take of all the demographics, whether it's uh, race, gender, sex, whatever you can do and just cut through every single one of them. Yeah, what do we how, do we, do? how do we keep penetrating yeah. all these different demographics? So I'll, I'll give an example of the female market is uh, one is um, it's not a t- day where a different females coming up to me is like, well, why happy dad? Why aren't you doing happy mom? I've been mm-hmm. hearing that for almost two years, you know, so great idea yeah great idea so we're doing happy mom uh-huh. um and it'll be s- similar type of product and just different brands. the same product just different flavor and oh, we said okay so instead of 10 men taste testing the flavors which is what we've been doing the last couple of years with our existing flavors let's get 10 females mm-hmm. women who work for us women within our world in the industry uh, my wife, she came in I was on it. Say, is Renee one? Yeah, Renee's one. So <laughs> no ten, pressure. Ten, yeah, ten of them. Ten of them. <laughs> she's, she's. I mean, they all had to be honest. But yeah. uh, if anyone's gonna be honest, it's gonna be her. But the ten of them came together and they came up with the flavor together. So, so you know, it's like, all right, cool. So the 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 brandy's there, mm-hmm. the flavor's there. Ten women love this flavor, and we're gonna. That's gonna be the first flavor. Is Happy Mom. So now we're going after the female market. And how do you think about? The audience being 80, 90 percent male, right, whatever it is, uh, being able to crack into that other side of maybe now it's not just the content drives it right. Like, is it now something where Happy Dad can like be bigger than Nelk? Can it escape, you know, kind of uh, being, hey, there's this group on YouTube who has a big audience mm-hmm. and like that's why Happy Dad is successful. And eventually people just say like, no, Happy Dad is like a successful seltzer that uh, survives on its own, even if Nelk never uploaded another video. Hey guys, I hope that you're enjoying this conversation. As you probably realize, we don't run any ads on this show. That's right. All the other podcasts, all the other YouTube shows that you watch, they have advertisers. We don't have any direct relationships with advertisers, and we simply create this because we enjoy doing it. Now that we do that, though, we have a team. And if you'd like to support us, one way you can do that is to go subscribe to the Pomp Letter. It's a daily letter that I write to about 235,000 people about my personal opinion on financial markets, business, technology, and Bitcoin. Just go to pompletter.com and you can sign up there. I'd love to have you join us. And it's a great, easy way to support the work that the team and I are doing on a daily basis. All right, let's get back into this conversation. Um, I think it's become bigger than Nelk. And I'll give you a couple of reasons why okay. I know just from experience. Um, this one's a small one, but this one happened. But this is to happen once with one person. So I can't really tell. But I have another example. Um, Kyle, who's the creator of the Nelk mm-hmm. Boys, um, he, um, main face of Nelk Boys, him and Steve. But Kyle was on a flight. He's wearing a Happy Dad hoodie. Guy next to him, sitting next to him, says, Hey, love your hoodie, man. I love Happy Dad. And Kyle's like, Oh, cool. He's like, Thank you, shit. I'm sitting next to a fan. This is going to yeah. be a brutal flight. Yeah, yeah. So the guy is just talking about Happy Dad, this and that. And at the end of the flight, um, the guy is just like, Oh, what's your name? He's like, Kyle. He's like, I'm so and so. 
Kyle was like, wow, this guy doesn't even know who I am. Like he had no idea the guy who Kyle was. Wow. But he was talking about Happy Dad and, you know, was talking about why he likes Happy Dad and this and that. And then I don't know if Kyle ever revealed who he was. Yeah, he yeah. was just like, this was crazy. Like I, this guy had no idea. So that's one. But uh, this is a, this this other one is a bigger example is um, we did a test run in Costco. Okay. So Costco, Northern California called us. They said, we want to test Happy Dad. Um, we want to test it in nine locations. And uh, usually a product, when you want to get into Costco, you'll make a bigger product because Costco always likes the lowest price. Mm -hmm. So you want you want to give them, but they look at per unit price. So that's why most people make like larger club packages um, mm -hmm. for Costco. So you get maximum dollar, but at a cheaper price, price a visual price point. We weren't ready to do that. We only have a 12 pack available. Mm -hmm. So we we're like, all right, well, you're just gonna have to sell the 12 pack for now. We don't, it's gonna take us some time to make a 24 or 36 pack. I think we've decided to make a 24 now. But, um, so we gave them 12, um, the 12 packs. They tested in nine stores in Northern California. The product got shipped out earlier than we knew. So it was, it got, it got delivered to the Costco stores a whole week before. We had this whole marketing plan in place. Mm -hmm. Basically, you just, and like the marketing plan is like, we're going to tell people to go buy it. Yeah. We're going to show up. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. We're like, going to do all this stuff. We'll sell out that. for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. We <laughs> got to impress Costco. Yeah. We got to show them how fast we move. Um, the product got there a whole week before. We didn't know. And people are messaging us. Like, hey, just saw you at Costco. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, we're not supposed to be there till next week, Thursday. But it, it was a whole week, th Thursday before. Calling some of our partners. They're like, yeah. Um, so by the time we got some answers, um, it was like now Monday by the time we got answers. And I'm like, well, we got to like implement this thing. I don't want Costco to think we're a flop, They're like, You're sold out all nine Costco's. I said, what? We, we never promoted. Look at our socials. We never promoted available on Costco. No one posted on social media. And one thing, I, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, our audience is 25 year olds and up mm -hmm. 25, to 30 year olds in Northern California. That is not Northern California is not a big market for us. And 25 year olds aren't really going to Costco to shop. Yep. Yep. So it's not our even audience. How much of this is like um, uh, prime? Uh, I don't know if the numbers leaked or, or somebody reported them, but the uh, prime drink, um, I think they did like $250 million last year in mm -hmm. uh, revenue. And uh, I've talked to a couple of friends who have kids that are, you know, kind of like eight to maybe 15 years old. And they're like, my kid can't find it. My kid, you know, mm -hmm. if, if there's a gas station locally that has it, like they all spread the word very quickly and they go and they pick it up. And some of them are even reselling it at school for a, uh, a premium and like all this kind of mm -hmm. stuff, right? Like how much of that is baked into what you guys have done with Happy Dad when I see people, you know, in a line down the street and it's like, look, we want to sell out, but like there is this scarcity element of it that drives people to go to run over to Costco and buy at, buy it out mm -hmm. because it's not widely available in Northern California, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we are available in Northern California. Mm -hmm. The Costco one was a whole different audience that gave this, gave Happy Dad a try, whether mm -hmm. it was older guys. So, so I'd love to talk about Prime in a second, what you were talking about their numbers, but, uh, but with Happy Dad, so the 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 neighborhood I live in is all you're not you're not gonna find an adult under under the age of thirty five. It's but it's like younger families, thirty five to fifty year olds live in my neighborhood. Uh, I've made a mandate like every we have three grocery stores in my neighborhood and we have like five different bars, and I and I've told our team, hey, listen, like everywhere in my city, and I live in a smaller city, twenty thousand people. Um, every location that sells alcohol in my city got to do me a favor and make sure we're stocked up. Like, mm -hmm. I got to see it. Like, I, I don't want to go to my Albertsons or my Stater Brothers mm -hmm. or even my Selma's Pizza, the pizza place or Board and Brew, my sandwich place and not see Happy Dad. So they've made it. They're like, all right. And, and uh, literally, I said it because me, but also like, I think this audience is 35 year old to 50 year old men. You know, what are the, they're, they're all dads. You know what I mean? Yeah, like they yeah. see a product called Happy Dad. And I think that's what happened in Costco. Like Happy Dad. That sounds I'm cool. a happy dad. You know, I'm here. I'm here to buy a bunch of tri tip. Like I'm, a, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a happy dad. Um, my wife let me out of the house. So I think people were, you know, the marketing of that is mm -hmm. now getting the 35 year old to 50 year old men, whether they're the people living in my neighborhood or going to Costco, the Costco shoppers. Uh, but the products would be great because mm -hmm. somebody went back and bought it again. You know, like mm -hmm. somebody went and said, Hey, let me give this a try. You know, you know, it's bought 12 of them. Maybe took them out in a day or two and went back that Sunday or Monday and bought more. So 
So the rebuys are really important. Going back to what we opened up and talked about was the products got to be great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think that's so the scarcity of it, I think, maybe helped a little bit in the very beginning. But now it's the actual product and hitting different audiences. Yeah. Like, like we were talking about genders, um, ethnicities, age groups, mm-hmm. you know, like a Nelk audience pretty much caps at like 31, 32 years old. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like probably the oldest, you know. Um, so, you know, how do I get the 32 to 50 year old to drink mm-hmm. you know, or 60 year old to yeah. drink? And what about prime? Like, What do you guys think about that? Um, someone asked me this morning, actually, do you think those numbers are real? I, I think so. Like, I think you gotta remember one thing prime. One thing I do hate is when people compare us to prime, which happens sometimes on social media. I don't even know why I read social media, but on social media, like, you know, oh, right. Prime's doing 250 million. Like show us your numbers. Like now nah, ours is not that, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, but we're also in 16 States only. And, but, but I do believe that prime's doing the, um, that because not only are they available in all states, but they're also absolutely massive in the UK. Like KSI, like is he a sleeper, bro, like, oh, like in terms of for for Americans, like he's he's yeah. that guy in the I UK. I don't think people know how big KSI is in the UK. Like yeah. he's I I mean he's like he's like borderline royalty out there. Like they love KSI out out in the UK. So so you got that strategic partner. Mm-hmm in Europe. Then you have Logan here mm-hmm. and then like Logan's genius marketing, right? It's like there's not a place where he's not holding up the bottle mm-hmm. and making sure it's the bottles getting as many impressions. But also like, you know, I've got a lot of all my friends, you know, I was telling you before we even got started like all my boys back home, like my best friends are we have there's a group of 10 of us from high school 20 something years later we're all still best friends. Most of them have kids. Whenever they're com- they're coming over the, at a Super Bowl party, all the kids, "Uncle John, do you have Prime?" You know, dads are drinking happy dad, but Uncle John, do you have prime? And they Logan always sends me cases to my yeah. house. So I'm always like giving the kids prime and now they want to come back. We want to go to Uncle John's house. He has prime. These are kids between eight, eight and 13 years old. Yeah. yeah. And is it like just basically replacing Gatorade for them? I think so. Like, yeah. like you know, you and I probably grew up and it was like the Michael Jordan commercials and Gatorade. Yeah. And I remember when Powerade came, you kind of like, I, don't I think know. it's 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 what you just said. I think it's Gatorade combined with Michael Jordan because Michael Jordan, it was cool to wear. Michael mm-hmm. Jordan because of Michael Jordan because Michael Jordan mm-hmm. was so cool to kids back then. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what Logan is. Logan is really cool to kids these days. So mm-hmm. he really appeals to the eight to thirteen to you know teens. You know teens of all ages. You know mm-hmm. people they love Logan. Obviously, a lot of people hate Logan and Jake. You yeah. know, that's but fine. but but you know, but also during the world of combat sports there's you're supposed to have people hate you that, yeah. that's that's why people are buying <laughs> these pay-per-views and they're making gazillions of dollars with the pay-per-views so yeah. but kids love logan paul kids love jake paul i i know because i see it myself with all my friends kids so yeah. that's why i think those numbers are real and i think man i think like i think this is what maybe their second full year too like i think they're about as old as i remember i think we're around the same age just happy mm-hmm. that maybe started a little bit later but they're murdering it uh, I want to talk about a couple other things, but um, on the like, uh, I'll call it the Nelk business. You also have, uh, as you mentioned, other podcasts. You guys have other products. I know that you guys have talked about uh, doing some sort of jerky product. You guys are obviously still doing merch. I've heard numbers that are like mid eight figures on the merch in a year. Like this is like a big, big business. Mm-hmm. What is the structure of this? Is this like a bunch of different businesses and each one has kind of different partners and, and equity splits or whatever? Is there like a it all rolls up and there's kind of like a holding company and people would think of it almost like a conglomerate? Like when, when you put on like the business hat, how do you think about the way you all have built this? And some of it may be intentional and some of it, you know, sometimes you're just moving so fast that like, you're like, oh, dude, it's a complete mess. We got to fix it. Right. But like, is it comparable to the conglomerates of like yesteryear that people would be familiar with in like public companies or uh, mm-hmm. or even private conglomerates, or does it look different from that? Well, um, I think it's it's so I, I'll break down the entire structure. Um, there's there's three companies. Um, mm-hmm. There's Happy Dad LLC, the beverage, consumer goods, food product. I'm gonna get to that and the kind of the real vision behind the direction where happy dad's going there's full send which is milk full send uh content house but also uh, merch mm-hmm. um those uh eight figures that you've heard has been underneath the full send milk umbrella mm-hmm. 
And then there's Shots Podcast Network, which is my yeah, sh shot, formerly known as Shot Studios, became a podcast network during COVID. You know, when we had to sh pretty much shut down the studios and couldn't really have production, we pivoted the whole business into podcasting. Um, and those three pretty much ran by me, my brother, Sam and Kyle. So Kyle's now a partner in Shots as well. And um, and, and Steve will do it. And um, so let's go, go back. So Shots is just a network. Shots has got the relationships with all the platforms. Mm -hmm. Shots is um, pretty much I mean, 14 years of me doing YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, so there's Shots. Then there's Full Send, which which is really the merch teams from mm -hmm. Full Send Golf, Full Send Fortnite, Fitness, um, all the different collabs Full Send does, and then even powering Happy Dad merch. Mm -hmm. But then there's Happy Dad. The way we see Happy Dad is, um, you know, it's not the same as like like we don't see ourselves as like the next Budweiser, um, definitely not the next truly a White Claw. Uh, I think it's much bigger than that. I see it as the, uh, the next PepsiCo is mm -hmm. what I see. Like I, I when I want to model the Happy Dad company, I think of the PepsiCo model. Pepsi owns Pepsi and all the different Pepsi products, Mountain Dew, mm -hmm. different variations of Pepsi. Pepsi also owns Frito Lay. Mm -hmm. uh, Pepsi also owns Gatorade. Mm -hmm. uh, Pepsi owns bunch of different water companies, including Aquafina. So they're in the beverage and they're in the, in the, in the you know, consumer goods product um, world. Up until recently, Pepsi owned Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, mm -hmm. KFC, Long John Silvers. Um, and that's kind of the model with Happy Dad is, you know, we have Happy Dad. Happy Dad's the number one priority when it comes to consumer goods. But what more can Happy Dad do? We have these teams that are walking through these stores, they're merchandising, they're building these displays, they're developing relationships with store owners, store managers, buyers, everybody, mm -hmm. you know? So while we're doing that, and we have our own staff that's internal, so we didn't subcontract out, we don't use a third party distributor for this. We use third party distributors to distribute the alcohol, but not to go actually build the relationships. We own those relationships. Mm -hmm. They're Happy Dad employees, they have happydad.com emails. So while we're doing that, what more can we do? Mm -hmm. um, that's where the idea of beef jerky came in. Mm -hmm. uh, it was presented to me about a year ago. Um, just somebody just cold emailed me and just said, hey, like, I've got a beef jerky company. Would like, would love to see if there's something we can do together. I'm, I live in Orange County. We're in Orange County. And I said, hey, stop by the office. Let me give it a try, bring some samples. Try it out. I was like, wow, this is really good. Um, you know, shout out to this guy, but um, Ahmad, but um, the the branding wasn't there though. I was like, listen, like I don't think anyone's gonna buy that, but but you've done the most hardest part. You've made a great product. Mm -hmm. Let me help you with the branding. Let me I'll come up with something and let me help you with the distribution. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's what we did. We rebranded it. Uh, during the time we had bought a bunch of board apes, mm -hmm. so we said, all right, so we have four apes. Why don't we do each one of the apes will be a different flavor. Mm -hmm. Call it beef jerky, board jerky. And um, and use our guys who are going into the 7-Elevens, Kroger's, independent stores, wherever, and say, hey, while we have Happy Dad, we actually have this other product as well. Mm -hmm. It's doing this, what you know, doing really great on socials. We're we're doing this sales wise. We're doing this, whatever, you know. Um, their spiel is and um and getting that into stores. And that's kind of like going back to the Pepsi model. Is all right, Pepsi has Pepsi, and probably Pepsi is the number one driver of revenue for the company is the Pepsi product, but Pepsi also has Frito Lay. What's our Frito Lay? Mm -hmm. be beef, beef jerky. Maybe down the road there'll be other products. Maybe we do get into non-alcohol or other alcohol. You know, we, we're getting to these liquor stores. Maybe there's a spirit. Maybe you know more. But right now, Happy Dad has a lot of work to do. And then there's, you know, our first food product that mm -hmm. we'll be distributing. In as you do this, how much of it'll be you guys ideating the actual products versus like somebody brings to you and you're like, hey, you already you know, you nailed the product, but we can help with the branding and distribution. And, and more so, there's probably a lot of people who are listening who may have products. Is this something you guys are actively seeking and saying, hey, look, if you got them, come show them to us or? Yeah, all, we're always, you know, I, you know, it's crazy. And, and I know my emails are going to blow up after I say this, but I read every single email that's sent to me. Yeah. Every single email, I'll read it. Um, so there's the other guys, you know, they pitched us on ATM machines, you know, and doing ATM machines. And my first instinct was that's not food. What's that have to do with us? But now I was like, wait a minute. Same place. We're in a lot of bars, you know, like 
we could, what if, what if we made happy dad, what if you skinned it as a happy dad ATM machine? And now it's another point of sale item inside that bar, right? Because mm -hmm. maybe someone didn't know happy dad's available there and they went to order Jack and Coke, but they needed to go get cash from the ATM machine. They see happy dad logo there and they come back and like, hey, you guys have happy dad here? Oh yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, they're mm -hmm. just not, you know, because people aren't, you know, we're um, less than two years old. They're not yeah. programmed to go to their bar and think to order happy dad yet. So how do we program point of sale items? Well, mm -hmm. point of sale, we've got coasters that we make available to all the different bars and other on-premise locations. We have neon signs available upon request. Um, we have napkins. We give the staff all the different merch, but like maybe the ATM machine is like, that's a pretty big piece of real estate inside that, yeah. uh, uh, that location. So. So, you know, I'm, I'm always looking at different things that people send. Um, we will we'll, uh, we'll come up with ideas ourselves. Um, you know, many of the fl like the flavor idea of Happy Mom or it's another one that we're coming out with early April. It's a very big partner. Um, um, it's going to be a big surprise, but a big partner first week of April. And then, um, you know, so those are all like the flavors and the ideas of the partnerships were all stuff that came in there internally, but then people pitch. So I would say it's like 50, 50, it's whatever, I yeah. mean, whatever makes sense. We're not going to just do anything. Um, you know, we do get pitched a lot of dumb stuff as well, you know, but you know, but, but if it makes sense and it's something that we could be helpful and doesn't distract us from what we're currently doing, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about Steve. Um, I don't really, I'm not as familiar with all of the controversy, but it sounds like uh, from a couple of videos I've seen recently, he's not allowed in the YouTube videos. Yeah, it's crazy. Or uh, they get they'll get taken down. Like, like what, I guess kind of what's happened there, and and especially for our audience who uh, mm -hmm. they're not going to be up on the latest, you know, kind of details of Nelk and, yeah. and the content. Like, how would you describe Steve as part of the group? And then it almost seems like he's kind of been banished off of YouTube. Yeah. Well, as part of the group, part of the group, it's very simple. Steve is a partner in everything we do. Um, Steve is a very close friend. I would even say to me a brother. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, he's part of our group and pretty much will be part of our group for the rest of our lives. So, so he's, he's part of us. Um, and that'll, you know, with or without whatever platform that that's never going to change, but, um, you know, it's very unclear. So when I was going back and we were talking about the Elon thing that Monday, when we met, when we were supposed to get with Elon, when we landed, we were told that Steve channel was permanently uh, banned and it just kind of soul uh, sucked the soul out of all of us um when that happened and um do you like tell elon like yo steve will do his channel got banned and then he's like steve will do what yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well no no because at the same time elon had also said um that um i guess someone had S S steve loves elon Okay. To this day, if you go down his Twitter, he's retweeting every single thing Elon says. Okay. And there was one time he made just this joke video when Bitcoin had crashed. And, uh, you know, it came out that, like, Elon sold all his Bitcoin and Bitcoin crashed. And Steve, like, lost a lot of money. So he made an anti-Elon video once. That's a joke. You know, the problem with, the, with the, the biggest problem Steve will do it has, and I think this is what's led to Steve's termination of his YouTube, is... um people can't tell that he's joking. Like they can't oh, tell his jokes. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if this is the best analogy, but I use this analogy once. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like if a woman, like, like, like if you see a, like a teacher, like out there, she's dressing, not like a teacher, but like mm -hmm. maybe like, mm -hmm. you know, she looks like she's like an exotic dancer. Mm -hmm. And you're like, dude, why is she dressed like that? She's a teacher. She's mm -hmm. not supposed to dress like that. But then, like, if you see a girl that you know, she's you know, she works at Tootsie's and she's dressed the same way that teacher was. She's like, no, that's fine. She's a, she's a stripper, you know. Like, mm -hmm. and I think that's the same thing with Steve. Is like, people don't know that he's a comedian, so when he says things, people are just like hit so off guard. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. why do you say that? It's like, no, he's a comedian. Steve is a funny, funny guy. So if you're not watching all this content, you don't get it. So if you're just watching a clip. You're gonna be offended because he will say some stuff, but it'd be no, offensive if it's just some random person on the street. But yeah. if you know a comedian said it, then maybe it'd be fine. But if Theo Vaughn says it, or if Tim Dillon says it, or if Dave Chappelle says it, or you know, 
you know, any any stand up comedian says it. It's like, oh no no, he's a stand up comedian. He says that kind of shit. Yeah. Ah, okay okay, damn, that guy's fucking and dark, <laughs> you know. But no one really knows Steve as that. It's like, who is he? It's like, oh, he's some kid from Florida that blew up on the internet. Yeah. Oh, and he said what? You know, and I think that's what's led to. Mm-hmm. People say it was because of gambling. Uh, maybe that's the reason that was used to um, terminate it. Um, but I don't think that's why. I think it's because people who are taking some of the things that he said was offensive because they don't know that he's actually joking. Mm-hmm. Because if if a, if a person who has a Netflix special stand-up comedian would say the same thing Steve said, people would be laughing about it and mm-hmm. sharing it. So I think that's kind of what happened with Steve. But it's a blessing in disguise because after that he did a deal with rumble and Mm -hmm. he's got a, you know, I know it's very early with rumble, but you know, he's like a priority to the CEO, Chris, he's like always taking care of Steve. They've become good friends. Um, you know, rumbles numbers have been through the roof ever since then. Uh, Steve also launched a, um, audio only podcast as well with the video on rumble, something very unique. And it's like helped his number now helped him develop a new audience on, on Spotify, that's like, you know, that's now introduced to the Steve Will Do It world. Now, it does hurt not being a, allowed on YouTube. Uh, he's launching a Snapchat show, you know. Um, obviously, with Twitter, he's he's good, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, so he can't even be in the videos for, like, the Full Send podcast. Mm-mm. That's crazy. Yeah. If he's Could a, you guys, like, have him, his we, voice, like, just put him off to the corner and not put him on video? It's just, it, 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 yeah, well, we've thought about it. We thought about putting him, you know, maybe make putting on a mask, you yeah, know, put him in a like, costume. You know, yeah, put him in a costume. You know, we've, we've thought of all, all of that. I can only imagine yeah. what you guys have thought of. Yeah, yeah, we've thought of it all. Maybe he's a, uh, you know, maybe he's a DJ competitor to Marshmallow, you know, it's mm-hmm. like just becomes this, the official DJ of Nelk, but no one knows who it is. Um, we've, we've thought of it all. Um, and we might do that. So hopefully, no one from YouTube's made it this far into this episode. But, um, no, the, the the truth is that's all joking aside is the truth is I think life goes on and I think it's time for him to focus on other things. People love Steve when he's still his channel was terminated in August. So it's been what, six, six seven, seven months. months yeah. And um, when he shows up for meetups, same same amount of crowd, you mm-hmm. know, um, you know, nothing's really changed other than not having YouTube. But like, you know, with Happy Dad, he's just as important as a partner to us. Um, you know, it, it's tough for me to say, I don't, I don't agree w- that he can't be in videos, you know? So it's just tough for me to like, kind of go down that rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. So I just kind of stay mute because, um, the people I've talked to at YouTube about it, um, I, I don't want to say who or what, mm-hmm. what department or anything, but they've all like pretty much like said the same thing to me It's like, we don't agree either. Like, like it's. It's like a deeper group within there. That, that. It seems weird. Like I understand taking down the channel, right? Like again, I don't agree with it based on what I understand he was yeah. saying or whatever. But like, okay. Uh, but to then say like you basically ban the person from YouTube, where like they can't even appear on anyone else's yeah channel. I don't know. It seems I, crazy. I think I feel like that's being bullied because if they said you know, and I think they're just bullying creators when they're saying that because Andrew Tate was banned from mm-hmm. YouTube as well, right? But he's on Pierce Morgan's channel on Piers. So Piers is okay because he's Piers Morgan and he's part of a massive network, mm-hmm. but we're just some small creators. We don't, you know, like you need that massive network because they probably spent X amount of dollars with this other department. So mm-hmm. you can't piss them off by deleting Piers Morgan's you know, cha- channel or, or, or video, but you don't really need anything from us, you know? Yeah. So Different we're, treatment. we're threatened, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, but, you know, if like, let's just say going back to Andrew Tate, who's probably, you know, what the most hated person on the internet, maybe the most banned person on the internet. Um, but if Andrew Tate went on good morning America, that'd be okay for them to air it on their channel. You go on good morning America 10 times. They're going to give ABC a hard time, you know? Um, but Steve will do it comes on the full send podcast. Hey, you're going to be terminated. Sounds like Steve will do it. Should go on good morning America. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very true. Right. Yeah. We, we got to see. Hey, actually he was joking about that. He was like, maybe, um, he's like, and, uh, you know, it's funny as, uh, 
He's like, maybe I should go on a Mr. Beast video. He's like, you think you can make that happen? Let's see if like they take down Mr. Beast. Oh, that's that's actually a genius idea. Like, let's see. Like, I yeah. doubt they would take down Mr. Beast. I don't think that they would do that. Mm -mm. Mm, he, he said that. He said that a few weeks ago. We were in Arizona. It was like, we were, we were talking about that. We're like, well, maybe we should put you in a Mr. Beast video. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's sad. It's sad because, um, listen, I would be the first to admit if we did something wrong. Mm -hmm. And 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 Nelk has done the world of Nelk. All all everyone has done some dumb things here and there. But does it nothing has nothing that's led to the consequence of being permanently banned yeah. on the biggest social network in the world, the second biggest website in the world without any type of warning. There was no warning, no nothing. So that why like, that's why it just kind of sucks. It's like this Steve has done. Listen, Steve has done a lot of dumb things, mm -hmm. a lot of them publicly, some behind the scenes a lot. And any time I've called him, I said, Steve, I wouldn't do that. Or I wouldn't, he stops. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like he stops. He's he's moving a million miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Anytime I've called How old him, is he? he's 24. You know? Hey, come Anytime on. I've called him or his mom's called him or Sam or Kyle, anyone's that say, hey, Steve, and, and explain logically, not Steve, stop. Hey, Steve, don't do this because this, 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 and that. Ah, fuck, I didn't think of it like that, John. You're so right. You yeah. know, or his mom or his Kyle. Imagine State. being a 24 year old kid and everything mm. you do basically is on the internet. Imagine yeah. how much dumb I things. can't, I can't, I can't imagine. <laughs> I can't. I wasn't, yeah, there was no, I don't even know. Come on. I mean, was YouTube even a thing when I was 24? I don't know. No. Um, but, um, but yeah, so that's why to me it was like Steve is a very logical, smart guy. He's not dumb at all. He's moving a million miles an hour, but if someone slows him down and explains things to him, he stops. I know, the, I know this. I talked to his mom and I are very close and we talk five, six days a week, you know, and where everyone's always in the, you know, we got this pretty much just board of directors around Steve to always protect him. Mm -hmm. But he listens. He's not, the, he's not unmanageable or anything like that. And yeah. that's the one thing he never got from YouTube was a phone call. Hey, we don't like this. Yeah, not you know, on. could you please not do this? Mm -hmm. That never happened. It just was, Hey, permanently banned, no appeal, no nothing. Sorry. Do you think it changes, uh, with, uh, Susan? leaving a CEO and uh, this guy, Neil coming in, or do you think that it's know. kind of below CEO level? I, I, I don't above? think it, I don't think it's a YouTube level. I think it was a Google level. I don't think it was a YouTube because everyone that I've talked to at YouTube, it's like, dude, we love this. We don't agree with this. Everyone I've talked to at YouTube, I've never yeah. talked to Susan about it, but everyone else I've talked to from, you know, high up down. Yeah. You know, like they've not, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Might not even be a YouTube thing. Might, it might be even be a third party contractor that they, you know, contracted policies out to. You know, yeah. everyone does that. Twitter, yeah, that, yeah, I know that. I know damn well Twitter did that. Elon got rid of them, all, all of them. Yeah. But Twitter was doing that. It wasn't we even a, a Twitter. We had our YouTube channel deleted one time. Uh, we were on a live stream and we got done and it was deleted. And thank God I had Twitter because I went on Twitter and I was you know, having a field day being like, what the hell just happened? Um, and it took a while, but I had numerous YouTube employees DM me and be like, hey, send me the information. And I'll you know try to navigate internally. Um, and it turns out that uh, the official communication was like, uh, there was a mistake made, channels reinstated, you're fine. Um, but the unofficial stuff was like, one person hit the delete button, mm -hmm. right? And like, I think to me, it was like, I, I don't know who the person was, I didn't wanna know, right? It's just like, look, just we got the channel back, move on, whatever. Um, I was like, man, one one employee can do that? Yeah. Right? That's what I mean. And like, that's when you, a, and when that's you get what to happened that to level, Steve. That's yeah. what happened to Steve, you know, and don't know who. Crazy. Don't know it was a contractor out, you know, they contracted a firm out of, in, you know, in the middle of nowhere. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. We'll never know. But what I tell Steve is maybe things change. Maybe there could be a reinstatement. But in the meantime, build this relationship with you have with Rumble. You know, mm -hmm. I know it's not YouTube, but they take care of you and they're they're growing as well. But then also you've got everything else. You know, you have so much more. And when we walk the streets of Steve, just as many people going losing their minds when they see Steve in the streets today as they were a year ago. So nothing's really changed as far as his relevancy goes. When you think of full send Nelk, kind of the whole thing today, right? Those three companies, et cetera, how big can this get? Like, is this a thing where the aspiration is we want to build a billion dollar business? We want to build a 10 billion, a hundred billion. Is it like, we think we can build this and you know some large corporation will come in and buy us out mm -hmm. like what like kind of when you guys sit around in private and you think about like imagine if how big are the dreams or aspirations um 
You know, one thing I've never ever done is build anything in hopes of selling. Mm -hmm. So I've always wanted I, every business, including shots over shots, is 14 years old now. Happy Dad's about two years old. Full Send Nelk. I only joined about almost three years ago now, uh, but it was, you know, it's about 10 years old, seven years old without me. Um, my first focus is to make it a successful, profitable business. Mm -hmm. Treat this like we're never selling and we're just going to be a profitable business. We're growing, we're innovating, you know, um, we're monetizing, you know, monetization. You know, monetization leads to being able to innovate and we could create, you know, Happy Dad was self-funded mm -hmm. at the very beginning. Um, to this day, we haven't really brought on any large investors. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, we make all decisions, you know, mm -hmm. Happy Mom, I didn't have to go get so-and-so's approval. We mm -hmm. decided. My brother and I decided, ran it by Steve and Kyle. They loved it. That's it. That's happening. You mm -hmm. know, um, and that's always been the philosophy. Now how big it could become, you know, cause we do have shareholders. So I sometimes have to answer that question is I think in each one of each one of those business itself is a several hundred million, if not billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. Um, and then happy dad, the different businesses within happy dad, I think, could, I, I think happy dad's a multi-billion dollar company. I think happy dad's, I think you're not much. thinking big enough. To, to, was like, that? Yeah, I think, I, no, I think happy, happy Dad could easily be 10 plus billion. 10 plus billion. I think Happy Dad's going to have a number of billion dollar companies within it, right? I mm -hmm. think Board Jerky itself is a billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. and I think someone will just call him. I like, saw hey. The Rock um, with Terramana Tequila. I'm going to mess up the numbers, but Casamigos, uh, I think when they sold, somebody said they were doing like 180,000 cases or they had done 180,000. I think they sold for a billion. And The Rock has now sold a million cases. No. Oh. Right? So again, maybe the numbers are you know not exactly the same from a multiple basis. Yeah. Uh, price points could be different, profitability could be different, the economic environment's different. Like you know, there's a whole bunch of uh, kind of asterisks alongside that. But like Terramont is probably a multi-billion-dollar uh, business, yeah. right? For that audience uh, size and engagement, I feel like not only do you guys have a, a very large audience, a very engaged audience, but you also have a really long runway, mm -hmm. right? Like. Everyone loves The Rock. He's one of the most recognizable people in the world, but he's older. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And so if you think over the next you know, 10, 15 years, all those 21 to 28, 29 year olds, they're eventually going to become 30 and 40 year olds. Yeah. We, you know, you know, and happy that we also have partners outside now. So Drewski mm -hmm. be, became a partner recently. Mm -hmm. uh, Sugar Sean O'Malley became mm -hmm. a partner recently. Um, there's a partner that's coming out April 1st. I can't say who. But I'm gonna show I'm gonna show you, and I just want you to see your reaction. All right, and then we'll. All right, you know, but I can't say. You can't say. I'm All just right. gonna show you. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> he actually came out with the flavor idea himself too. The Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a grand slam. Take out the. He came out with the flavor and the of packaging. Of course, of yeah. course. Yeah. Like, that's a grand slam. Yeah. So that's, so he's become a partner in the company. And um, and we're launching a, our first, uh, well, I don't, I don't wanna say our first, um, our first collab. Our first collab was actually, in my opinion, this, our board a mm -hmm. banana flavor. Um, mm -hmm. That was our first collab, but this will be our second collab, I guess you mm -hmm. would say. Um, but yeah, that's coming out. So, so that's, you know, so when now when I'm thinking happy dad, I'm like, all right, I got the, we've got these other partners. And by the way, he hits a different market. Like he's that and that was his approach to us. Mm -hmm. He came up and said, Hey, what are you doing within the black community? It's like mm -hmm. trying to figure it out. He's like, let me run that for you. Let me let me handle that part for you. Yeah, you know, I was like a pretty good person to do it. Yeah. So I was like, I'd love to have you. <laughs> you know, Mr. Or Mrs., you know, I'm not gonna I guess I've said him, so yeah, we know it's a Mr., but um, but yeah, yeah, let's let's do it. So this was about maybe a year ago this time. It's been a mm -hmm. year partnership in the works and we're launching it April 1st. Okay. So, um, but yeah, so going back to it is like, so shots in my opinion, several hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's right now it's currently actually the biggest podcast network on YouTube. Shots, wow. shots podcast network is. Um, Full Send is and can be the next bar stool sports, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it's going to be a lot of work. 
don't want to ever take away anything from Portnoy. 20 plus years of grinding. So it's not like an overnight thing. But in the long run, it could be its own network for sports content, male and female focused content, both, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, comedy, whatnot. And then, and then there's Happy Dad, which Happy Dad, the beverage itself to me is billion dollar plus company. Mm -hmm. But then Happy Dad's going to have these other brands within it that will also, you know, or jerky, in my opinion, could be a billion dollar plus company itself. Mm -hmm. So, so that's why it's like multiple, multiple ones, but all three are very different too. Yeah. But they all complement each other. You know, the full send brand and everything full send brings to the table helps Happy Dad. Yeah. Shots Podcast Network helps bring on podcasts. And you have like the Pivot Podcast where every episode they're drinking Happy Dad and we're partners with them now. And, you know, other partner, uh, other podcasts that we're going to bring underneath the partnership that, going to be drinking happy dad in every single episode or mm -hmm. in some of the collabs that we're going to do we're going to do a pivot podcast happy dad collab mm -hmm. you know um so you know so they very all they smart. all they all all these companies talk they all yeah. they all talk yeah it's very smart yeah where can we send people to find you if they want to just kind of pay attention as you guys continue or if they want to reach out um don't give your email yeah they, they find my email my email's too easy i gotta make it more complicated um no, I mean, my, my socials, you know, I'm, I'm just at John yeah. everywhere, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. I have at John. Um, I don't use TikTok much, but when every time, well, every so often I'm on at John there. I'm at John on YouTube. So just John everywhere. But uh, that's my personal. But I think if you really want to follow and see everything, just follow our brands. Follow Happy Dad on its on socials, Board Jerky, uh, Shots, Milk Boys. You know, those are, I think, more entertaining. My personal ones. Yeah, I'm so I'm so focused on helping other people with their social strategy. I forget about myself, so I don't really know what I'm doing. I just throw up random stuff on my socials. Yeah, I think you're doing just fine. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Listen, yeah. thank you so much for doing of this. Course. I always enjoy of talking, course, and uh, yeah. I, I don't think people quite understand just the uh, the size of what you guys have built and how fast some of the stuff's growing. So it's cool yeah. to talk to you, and yeah. uh, hopefully, it'll inspire a lot of other people to. Uh, to that, that's this well. that's why I do these podcasts, man. I, I want I want. Every once in a while, whenever I do these, someone messages me that they were inspired or they're doing this or that. Mm -hmm. I really, you know, I don't like doing a lot of these, but I do them because I just know that there's people out there who just want to get up and get off their ass and do it. Whether launch your own podcast, start your own company, design your own merch, mm -hmm. whatever it is, you know, like just do it. Because that's that's been the secret to us is like, you know, when we want to do something, we do it. And um, we don't like I've said before, and I'm going to say forever, we don't burn bridges. Um, we're always thinking long term and um, and, you know, and um, and we have fun. We you know we do everything we do. Everything that we do is just fun. So that's what I'm hoping that anyone who's listening to this will just get up and just do it. I love it. All uh, right. Thank you so cool. much. Thanks.